call to order this meeting of the Board of School Commissioners of Montpelier Public Schools. Um, our first item is public comment. Um, I have a member of the public. But I think this is Mr. Post, who I believe is here for agenda item four. Okay. So you don't have to speak. But you, you, you're, can, you can wait till you wait agenda, your agenda item item's four. Item. <laughs> 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 All right, so next consent agenda, um, we have the approval of the minutes of the May 16th school board meeting, approval of warrants for payroll and accounts payable for June 8th, approval of the quarter three financial report, which we reviewed at the last meeting, um, and approval of the resignations of Jessica Cobb and Barb Austin Hutchins. I move to accept the consent agenda. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Steve is coming. That's it. And now Peter's here. So. Look at all these board members. Yay. <laughs> uh, all right. Our fourth item is uh, limitations policy 2.3 financial concession. And we have a parent request for tuition waiver, which was briefly described in the superintendent memo. And apparently, we have a parent. Tell us more. Would you like to come up? Should I stand or sit? Or? If you can stand or sit, but either way, if you could introduce yourself, that'd be great. I'll sit if you don't mind. Makes me less nervous. <laughs> so I'm Rob Post, and uh, I want to thank the board for its time. Um, in allowing me to come and have a discussion about this issue. I really appreciate that. Um, as just mentioned, I'm here to request a tuition waiver for my two daughters who are in the Montpelier school system, Ivy, who's 11, in the fifth grade and Main Street Middle School, and Holly, who's seven, and in Union Elementary. Dr. Rickon knows a lot about this already. We've been talking over the last couple of weeks, so he's going to hear a lot of things twice. Um, so before I get into sort of the meat, he's totally used to that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before I get into the meat of what I wanted to explain as far as why I'm requesting a tuition waiver, I wanted to start with an apology, because when this started for me in uh, early January into February into early March when I had moved out of town into Randolph, I had not notified anyone about the removal of my children, and there are some reasons for that. And really, it was a mistake in judgment. And good judgment is something I'm usually known for. So I'm a little embarrassed by it. <laughs> so I just wanted to bring that up first and offer an apology for that. A um, lot going on at that time. I had moved. I had started a new job. Same day, actually, March 1st. And it was one of those times in life when sort of uh, I couldn't take any more stress or uh, unsurety. And so I was a little bit afraid of what would happen if I had to move my kids out of school because I had just lined up after school care here in Montpelier. There was none available in Randolph at all. And it was just a big transition time. And I made a mistake. And I should have done it differently. And I just wanted to acknowledge that fact before I started. So in early January, um, I had been notified by my landlord that uh, he would be moving back into the rental home that I had up on Prospect Street. And this sort of started this process. And we began to look for a place to move in Montpelier. And if you'd ever moved in Vermont in the winter, you will know that options are <coughs> limited at best. And I did a really diligent search around here, and I couldn't find any suitable housing for my family at that time. So I was forced to move to Randolph, where suitable housing could be found. Now, this move for me in Randolph is temporary. Um, it was not something I wanted to do. It's something I don't want to do now. It's just something I had to do. So this forced me to move myself and leave my kids here, like I just explained, and that's where I am now. So it's very important for me to have my children stay in Montpelier school system for the rest of the year for a couple of reasons. One is the educational continuity of having them finish out the year. Um, at least the older one I know is in the middle of final projects. I would love for her to finish those. And I don't know where the Randolph school system is in curriculum. I can't imagine it's the same. I, I don't know how closely these things are aligned, but I have a hard time believing that they'll walk into the same exact place they are now in school. So that's one thing. And the second thing would be the social aspects of this. They have been in school with these kids for a couple of years now, and we're coming up at the end of the year. And I personally find a lot of pride in finishing out something I started with my friends and classmates and coworkers, and to pull them out of school at this juncture, when we're so close to the end, doesn't seem quite right to me. 
and it uh, strikes me as, as nothing of their fault, and as a parent, it just sort of hurts me to have to do that to them. Um, so Dr. Rick has explained to me that they can stay in school if I were able to pay tuition, which is something I simply can't financially do. So I'm left with two tough choices. You come up with money I don't have, or pull them out of school and put them in Randolph Elementary for the next two weeks until the, sem the semester is over. And that is really the long and short of what I had to say today. Um, that's really all I got. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to field them. Are you trying to come back to Montpelier for next year? Or? I am trying to come back to Montpelier for next year. I couldn't say with any surety that that will happen due to various circumstances. I own a property in Bennington, Vermont, that I'm trying to sell very badly in order to come up with some equity to purchase a home. Um, that is not quite happening. Um, we are looking for rental properties uh, up here in Montpelier. As of right now, my children are enrolled in summer camp in Randolph for the summer, but it is my intention to come back up to Montpelier as soon as I can. I work here in Montpelier at the judiciary, and my wife works in Barry at Washington County Mental Health, so living in Randolph isn't exactly ideal for us. So I'm very much hoping it's temporary. Any other questions? Okay. Um, any motion for discussion? Um. So the normal pol the regular pol what's the standard policy that so we do? because he was uh, be the um, procedure F twenty that was a part of the packet states that when a non when a resident student becomes a non resident student the superintendent has at his or her discretion up to ninety calendar days to waive the right. tuition which I have um, so that started on March first um, okay but it ended with eighteen days left in the school year. So um, the consideration okay. for the board is what to do about these remaining 18 days. Okay. Essentially, right. essentially, the policy doesn't allow Ryan to wait. Yeah, I, I, understand. Understand. I can't do more. It comes to us at that point. I also I'll forgot to mention that I wanted to thank Dr. Ricker for waiving those 90 days. It was my pleasure. Much appreciated. It's my pleasure. I'll just put a motion on the table so we can discuss it. Um, I, I move that uh, the board waive tuition except for $500 for the remaining 18 days of the Period without really feeling strongly about the number, but just to get something out there so we can talk about it. So, I was just going to say friendly amendments oh. <laughs> accepted in the other direction, probably. <laughs> anyway, will someone second it? So we can. Second. I'll second it. Okay. Discussion? So, Brian, what was the, what's the family rate? So, <coughs> if if we were to straight up charge Mr. Potter <coughs> Post and his family the total cost for both children would be $2,427.12. Um, and I spoke to Grant, um, recognizing that it's a substantial amount of money. And Mr. Post and I have had a, a good uh, amount of communication since this um, came up. And we thought that it would be appropriate to cut that in half, since it was just one family. So we've halved, for so lack of a better word. That that's the get. half um, <clears throat> of what, it, what the, the full cost is, the twenty four twenty seven. Mm -hmm. We thought one family, it mm -hmm. would be reasonable to have it. To have it. Half it. Half it. Half it. Yep. I mean, it sounds to me like this is a difficult situation. I certainly want Agreed. these kids to be able to finish the school year. Um, what a terrible time to have to pull your kids out of school. So, no. uh, and it's, you know, even half is a lot of money for mm -hmm. a family that's trying to deal with moving. So I was, anyway. So I'd probably be comfortable with, with with the, a lower number, but wanted to put something on the table to see where people are. Uh, I'm all for this. You know, I mean, I understand. I just worry what happens if we do this as a precedent. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's my only concern. And again, this is not fair at you. I'm not saying we're making this. I'm, this is not fair to you at all. It's the argument I would make if I were on your side of the table. So, yeah. I, and so, <laughs> for, for context, we're kind of drowning in tuition and waiver requests at the moment. And here's the yeah. and it, and and this could mm -hmm. be. And I'm not saying people are going to run through the doors and ask for all these, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. we actually help, they are yeah. Oh, yeah. recently. <laughs> so we, we need some kind of criteria. <clears throat> and again, no offense, Mr. Yeah. Post. No, no, all. Someone saying it's hard on them. I believe everyone who says that. No one. 
but we need some kind of criteria to make these decisions. Otherwise, yeah. someone right. then will be treated unfairly. Right. So I, I just am asking us, like, what are we going to use to evaluate this? Mm -hmm. I will say the last two that we have denied, one was for six years of tuition and one was for 26 years of tuition. So those were really in a different Yeah, ballpark. I understand. Uh, well, I'm just trying to yep. find yeah. what our right. criteria might be, and those seem to me very different. And the, the one that we're different. looking at this evening, again, is another six years of tuition. So. I mean, I would think we could almost set a dollar figure, like if you're asking for more than $40,000, that's a very different conversation than if you're asking for less than $5,000. Or, or you could look at it. I don't know where it. we draw that line, but. Or you yeah. could look at it in, in terms of the amount of time. The reason that we're doing this is 18 days. Right. And you could say the last semester or the last amount of time that would be fair for the students. So you could do it either way. I agree. Some, some 18 days, or then the next one is 25 days, right. or 30 I days with, with no. Um, could you do a semester? Could you do a right. year? I mean, could you use a time, set time? I'm also on it personally more inclined to. Um, look favorably on circumstances in which the kids are already enrolled in mm -hmm. our school. Right. Right. And right. But the question is how much, what if they asked for six months right. versus five and a half months? Right. I, mean, yeah. I no, don't know. Right. And I'm yeah. not saying, uh, I feel bad that he's our, he's he's our guinea pig. Man, he's our <laughs> example. I'm our guinea pig because we haven't had to have this discussion. But how do we? do this where everyone's treated fairly without, you know, with criteria. <clears throat> Can I ask a question of Grant, which you may not know the answer of, and that is totally fair because it's coming out of the blue. Is there a point at which these actually, like, affect the budget in terms of the equalized pupil number and what we get from the state? Um, this situation would in, impact tax rates because the equalized pupil count is based on the count that's done at the beginning of the year. In October. So the tax rate was already set before. That's true of anybody who asks after the tax rate is set. Right. Okay. But it's still, that's yeah. still. But in terms I wanted to know that. In terms of <clears throat> revenue received? Not an impact for us because we're talking about a student who is our student, so there wasn't an expense. Okay. And there, I mean, and there isn't any revenue either. There was a tax rate that was calculated. Okay. So when we're talking about a student that was ours, that it has left, really, it's, there's, there's no budgetary implication other than if there was a charge. Well, there's a couple things. One, so, if, if, if can, there's I, a lot, can I interrupt for just one yeah. second, Grant? So waiving tuition versus paying tuition, very different in terms of their? Very different. Okay. So if, for example, like later on, if you're discussing whether to allow a student to attend a different school for years and we would have to pay tuition for that, that's a big budgetary implication. In this case, if we had, you know, five fifth graders leave, and then maybe what we could say in the back of our head is, well, maybe that would have impacted our staffing. Maybe we could have got away with one less teacher or something like that, you know, but really, in this case, with one student in each grade, they've been with us all year. There's not really a budgetary implication in this situation, um, other than the fact that if tuition is charged, then it becomes a revenue to offset other expenses. Um, Another child in a different situation, however, which who might be a child that costs us more money with some services that they might need in the same situation would be would be more of a cost. Well, we can't go down that road. That's yeah. not a conversation we can have. But to add sort of Peter's question together with Bridget's question and send it back, <laughs> how far back in the school year would we have to go to run into a budget impact? Does it matter? I mean. Well, I guess it depends on the kind of cost that we're dealing with. I mean, if there were other costs other than just um, permanent staff. I mean, if there were, 
if there were staff assigned specifically, if there were, um, once again, to go back to Tina's point, I mean, if, if there was an outside placement and you were incurring any costs, then there would be a budgetary implication, but I agree you can't really get into that because it's personally identifiable. Right. So it's not like you can ask those kinds of questions. Um, but I look at this and think, you know, if, if we're waiting 90 days, you know, another 18 days, isn't that big of a deal if you want to just be able to show that for future reference, if, it's, if it ends up being 100 days and it really is significant, that we at least have a precedent of, of charging some kind of nominal amount. 100 days beyond the 90, you mean? Or 100 total? Yeah, I'm saying if it, if it was like from the first semester and somebody was looking at I agree that maybe we should be thinking about setting a bar of sometime during the second semester. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or uh, some, we also have situations where somebody's like, you know, and, and Mr. Post may well find himself in this situation where he's living in Randolph, but he wants his kids to come back to Montpelier schools in the fall. He knows he's closing on a house the 1st of November. Can he get a waiver for the incoming? Right. You know what I mean? In that case, we, we he can get 60 days. 60 days. We have so, had right. that kind of a request Correct. in the past. I, <clears throat> Peter? So, you know, for me, me personally, it's, um, I don't mind digging into the reserves to find the money if, you know, there's an economic hardship if someone's reeling and gets worked over. So I'm more or less obsessed about the days, but I just want there to be a fair system because everyone deserves yeah, a fair mm -hmm, shake. The one thing we should never be accused of is being biased or unfair if one mm -hmm. of our friends is up there, you mm -hmm. know. Right. Is mm -hmm. there a way, without really making it too hard on our superintendent or our staff, to have some kind of application for hardship be, and have it be confidential between the applicant and the staff. And so when we get our, our note saying, I believe this person passes the criteria for an application for economic hardship and so that the, the, finance, the money should waive it. So at least we could always say to the public, well, there was a process and this person made the case for an economic hardship waiver and we are gonna grant him or her the amount they need. And then at least we could say there was a process and, it, and we, we trust that the superintendent made the right decision. But, but I then think it like would be simpler to choose either a point in time, okay. either a number of days or an amount of money, <clears throat> rather than trying to ask the staff to analyze people's financial situations. Well, I'm not I mean, saying he's going to go into taxes. Unless you just based on like their adjusted gross from their last taxes. No, no, I wouldn't. Uh, no, not that. We're not going to. I was thinking something more along the lines of someone writing a letter saying, I'm asking this waiver because I have to move unexpectedly. My bank account was emptied because I had to put a security deposit down. And if that sounds compelling, you know, I'm assuming people are going to be honest. You don't like that. Okay. I just thought it. It's just scary. Okay. Rather, Fair enough. I, I would also say you could say you're, you're being biased for that reason. You're, you're okay. helping somebody Okay. Okay. I'm not, I'm not super obsessed. I was just trying okay. to think of a way that we could have some situation. kind of criteria that the staff could evaluate to allow us to... Yeah. make a decision that would be fair to everyone. I think right. it's easier to look at the 18 days, yeah. I and, and that doesn't have to do with necessarily hardship. So if you look at a time period, and the reason we're doing this is because eight, you don't want to start a kid in Randolph mm -hmm. with 18 days left and they do field trips and that's it. Doesn't even make so sense. that would be, a in my mind, a cleaner way to do it is to just look at the days. Now maybe then you have to make it fair, because you're right, we need to have a system that doesn't look like it's biased. We, we make a, a calendar to say either the semester or halfway through the semester or at what point. If he'd asked for it in January, it would have been different. Or So can we say there's a time? Um, How many days in a semester? <coughs> 90. Approximately 90? Roughly. I mean, there are you know, 180. I, I, I would say what's compelling here is that, you know, I've, I've also, I don't think it's necessarily been with everyone who's on this current board. Other factors that this board could think of in terms of consideration are, um, the year that the child is in school. Yeah. You know, if it's an right. eighth grader, if it's a senior. I mean, I, I think there are ways that you can say thoughtfully. I agree with Nancy. To me, especially at this time of year, 30 days and under, I think would be a reasonable place. At the same time, I do feel that it's okay to ask for some nominal portion. You, you know, you can mm -hmm. waive. And, and the only reason I say that is because of the earlier conversation that there are other people that are coming, that are asking for 
waivers. They may be different in nature, and they may be different for different reasons. And I think it's still appropriate for this board to be able to say, we were able to waive this given these circumstances, days, time of year, student, grade, et cetera, and we still asked for X. $500 uh, or two. I, I don't, I'm not going to weigh in on that part, but I think those are, those are some good um, perimeters for this. So, oh, so okay. We still have a motion. Right, we have a motion mm -hmm. on the table. I, I, I would just say, given the very short number of days beyond the 90, and the fact that it's the end of the year, um, you know, I, I'm comfortable with 500. I, I would be comfortable with waiving it all, but so I'm sort of where, where someone wants to, if that's where the board is and someone wants to make a friendly amendment, that's fine, or with the nominal amount, I'm okay with that too. I, you know, I, I'm not sure I'm prepared to decide exactly where the line is, but I feel quite comfortable that this is on the grant mm -hmm. side mm -hmm. of the line. I agree, and I would think it might be important to keep keep track of the decisions we make and why we make them, and so we can at least begin to collect the data about the decisions mm -hmm. so that we can track it, and then that might be the beginning of setting up a precedent. We've not received as many of these in mm -hmm. the last five years as mm -hmm. we have in the last two weeks. <laughs> All the more reason to start collecting the, the, mm -hmm. the decisions and the reasons for the decisions, and then maybe a, a, a pattern will arise out of that. But in the meantime, I, I would support a, f a $500, um, which was, I think, the original proposal. Tina? Yeah, I'd support it, too. I, I'm, I'm, wishing, I'm wishing it was clear what we're doing. Mm -hmm. I agree with mm -hmm. Peter, but mm -hmm. Peter, do you have another solution? Yeah, not on the fly, that's fair. I mean, we can also, as we make the new policy, for the new policies for the new district, um, I don't know if we've gotten to that one. Yeah. <coughs> so this is not a mandated policy, and uh, F14 yeah. was rescinded from being a policy when you right. went and went to policy government, so it's a procedure. Okay. You could still address it as, as um, part of budgeting. I mean, if that's, so... I mean, we could we could amend we could do something to mm -hmm. put well, we, we could, could put something in writing with regard to, to a mm -hmm. policy mm -hmm. on that. Um. Can I ask a question? Yeah. <clears throat> um, so when I was thinking about this, the one thing that I was mostly concerned about was that my kids remaining here in school would be costing money, and would justify me paying tuition, as as opposed to they were not budgeted for already. And now because of their staying here, now there's additional funds. But what I understand from what I heard you say was that this tax code is already set. Mm -hmm. So they're not really costing any more money to remain. Is that right? Correct. Correct. There's no budget impact. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so my inclination is to amend the motion to waive the tuition entirely um, on the basis that Bridget gave of it being, um, you know, less than 30 days into the school year. And, um, yeah. and the only thing I was thinking about pertaining to that is that um, is the precedent piece mm -hmm. that this mm -hmm. um, this <coughs> sets that something was paid, and that in the discussion when you ask in, in, for some other reason if it's 25 days or 30 days or something, right. that there's a precedent of some amount in your keeping track of. Right. I guess that's the only thing I'd say. I think that's fair. Peter, where, where are you on that? Because I think, I think it's too to too. Oh, God. <laughs> um, no matter what we do, it's going to be arbitrary. I know. <laughs> That's the problem. So whether mm -hmm. we charge Mr. Post 500 bucks or 200 bucks or not, it's arbitrary and we have no rationale, right? We can make the case to the next person that comes that zero is the right amount. There isn't that 500 there. I mean, I'm inclined to, you know, because it's not having a budget impact, 
anything we say is going to be dangerous because we've already given him 60 days, you know. We gave him, we give, well, we've given him the 90, so we so gave far him 90, we've stuck to the procedure. Right, which mm -hmm. is still we don't have to do. We chose to do it. Right. So it's arbitrary no matter what we do. You know, I don't, I, I mean, I don't know why we asked for anything, but Brian, what was your rationale for in your, in your memo for, do you feel comfortable talking about that? Sure. Right. I, I think the precedent, honestly, um, would be a dangerous one to set. I think that others who are not the precedent as, of not charging, of anything. Not charging anything. Okay. I think others who are not as honest as um, Mr. Post could potentially take advantage of the board. I will tell you, residency occasionally, and sometimes more than occasionally, pops up where people have moved, are not as honest as Mr. Post, and take advantage of the fact that that's a very difficult thing to have to track down. So, so they move to a place where it's that they move to a non, they are non-residents and they continue to send their really? children to school mm -hmm. here. Do yes. That? Yeah. yes. Oh yeah, it's a common. Yes. Yeah. And so um, oh, wow. I reach out Can often. We only find that out by like remote. Try to connect. Really. Occasionally, we'll send Officer Nisley to do a residency check. Wow. Um, right. To to be sure. And so, uh, you know, this this is a hard part because in a sense. We're quote unquote yeah. um, punishing Mr. Post yeah. for being honest, <laughs> right? Um, and that's why that's why I stated something. You know, I, I think the family should contribute something, not the whole amount. I, I will be honest with you. That's a lot of money for 18 days, and I understood when Mr. Post wrote back to me when I offered him the family amount and said that he wanted to come here. As a dad, I would totally understand that. At the same time, I think it would be too dangerous for the board to say okay. no. Okay. Yep. So could we do something like I don't want? I know a hundred dollars is still a lot of money, but that, it at least lays the groundwork for. Was, I mean, like fifty bucks sounds like a joke. To, right. I know a hundred dollars is a lot of money, but if we have to charge something, I mean, it's not the least we could charge where it sounds like something. I don't know. It's okay with me. It's okay with me. Mm -hmm. Do you want to move to a man's question? Me. Can I All right, I'll do, can I I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. I don't think I can. I'd like to move to amend the motion, Bridget's motion that we charge Mr. Post's family $100 for the remaining uh, 18 days tuition for his two children. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we have to vote again on the motion as amended. Yep. Oh, really? My. Honest. True story. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, do we, so we've approved the amendment of the yep. motion. Do we have a second for the amended motion? I did second the amendment. Okay, yeah. okay, great. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank goodness. Thank you. Sure. I appreciate Thanks for coming, time. In. Thanks for coming to us. <laughs> I think there was a fair outcome. Okay. And I, I appreciate you thinking that through. Not only for me, but for whatever comes after me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank good, you luck with, good luck with the yeah. move. And good luck with the move. Thank you. Well, hopefully, uh, by the, I committed from Randolph hopefully. for a long time. It's a long drive. Yeah, it's not great. Uh, hopefully by the end of summer, I'll have figured it out, and it'll be like they never left, which is really my goal. Great. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Good night. Great. All right. Um, can I hear a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. I second that. All those in favor? Hi. Hi. Bridget, it's all here. Do I have to move or can I stay? No, you should stay there.